And you know, when something happens that you make, you know, you make a mistake, people understand you don't really want to come out with it because we're ashamed. I understand that, you know? and I've done other things, but this is definitely not one of those cases. Man. I've not done anything. I've told them the truth, and all I can do is sit here and wait and have a million people try to talk me into saying I did something I did not. It's not fun. I guess I'm just trying to get, I'd like to see you help yourself. I think you still can help yourself. Who do you think I did? I don't know what happened. You know? Well, look at this way, I didn't do it yourself. Okay. And the only way I can help myself is by admitting to something I didn't do. That's what you're saying. No, not really. That's exactly what you're saying. Let's say, for instance, this other fellow, uh, Chuck, let's say this was all something he... It was his idea. Let's say that he's trying to pin this whole thing on you because he paints a pretty bad picture. Well, maybe that, maybe he is, but I wasn't no. with him. I don't know anything about it. Do you think it'd make it easier for him if you were able to, to come clean on what happened? I, 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 I have come clean, all right? But if you hadn't, if you hadn't, do you think it'd make it easier for your mom and dad? Your mom in particular? You said mom and dad. Well, I guess so. that yes, but I hadn't. I don't know how many times I have to say this to you guys. I have not done anything. I was not there. I did not do anything. But if there's a way that you could help yourself, you'd do it. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. I'm telling the truth, so I'm doing what I can. I mean, if you know what this is like, man, let me talk to my dad. Let me talk to my mom. So I don't get one phone call, man. I gotta call my dad to get Water feed, like I call them lungs, for sure. Let me find out about all that. Thank you. Okay. Chase, what do you got? There is, there are a few things wrong here from an interrogation perspective. So just looking through this lens, he's ignoring repeated denials. An interrogator shouldn't do that. Uh, there's a pressure being applied to help yourself that kind of implies a confession and not an emphasis at all on the truth. When the confession is more important than the truth, you will have a very bad interrogation. So if somebody believes the only way to improve their situation is by agreeing with an interrogator, there's a big problem. So it's also in introducing this alternative scenario, even after these denials, there's a denial of a request to speak with family. And in people this age, you got to be a little careful because they might be asking for legal help by asking it. Can I talk to my mom or my dad? Don't know how old this kid is, but then there's misinterpretation of cooperation. The police are interpreting this person. Him telling the truth or making denials is not cooperative. And this sets the stage for agreement being the only way out. Then there's a lack of clarity. Like, if there's a way that you can help yourself, would you do it? So these vague questions, just kind of, this is this is the interrogation version of the foot in the door technique. And there's genuine exasperation there. Uh, he is telling instead of selling this, the guy that we're looking at here, the suspect. There's one point in this clip, though, that he engages in real self-soothing behavior. And it's when he's talking about having to get lawyer's fees from his dad. So way too often, I think interrogators are trained to get confessions instead of truth. I got called to do a concierge interrogation once uh, here in the U.S. for a major crime. And the head of the department asked me how fast I could get a confession out of the guy. And I asked him if he was paying me for a confession or the truth. And he said all he wants is a confession. So I took my non-refundable deposit and went home. And the alleged suspect of that interview that I was supposed to do is free today. Mark, what do you got? Uh, yeah. So look, I will go back to the the space being used here. There's a difference between using space in order to build a connection with somebody and using space to be territorially aggressive. So yeah, absolutely. If you come into within a hands, uh, an arm's distance of somebody, you're in what we'd call personal space. And of course, you could be in that personal space and trying to create a connection, but you could also be in that personal space and taking that space and being 
intimidating. And just as you say there, Chase, it's kind of a foot in the door technique. I'd say again, we've got this guy leant back. So he doesn't look like he's proximate, but his hand is out at the corner of the table and taking up all of that space. That for me is not somebody trying to reach out and connect. That's somebody trying to take territory. And though you might want to do that towards the end of some kind of interview or some way through it as you've built rapport, I don't think this person is trying to build rapport at this point. I think he's trying to um to use his use use his status and use his weight and and use the space to his advantage, not to negotiate with this other person in order to win information. Um, and so the stress is building up in this in this person being interviewed. And so we get we get a suppression gesture here, uh, you know, keeping keeping down the energy. So we've, we've got clearly got tension building up, which he's keeping down. And then he's self-soothing on the front of his head with that. Again, that's an extreme gesture to see. The moment the hands, no, you know, most of the time, if you get somebody with their hands on their head at some point, either, you know, somebody scored and then you realize, oh, it's been disallowed. And it's that it's the clear suppression of that energy uh, or, or some awful situation has happened. Uh, and some realization of that. It's extreme to go up here. And here we have it in this situation. So extreme territory being taken, extreme suppression going on. Again, not really seen that very much in in many of the interviews that we've ever looked at. Scott, what do you got on this one? Yeah, I agree with you. This, he's not trying to, to uh, connect with this guy at all. Not even a little bit. He's he's already decided what's going to happen, and that, that this guy's already guilty. He thinks this other guy is, is, is like has confessed to everything. Apparently, he thinks that because he's going in so strong. He's not trying to do anything like that. I think we're seeing frustration. His he, we're seeing his hands through his hair. That's you know we'll do that when we're frustrated as well. Try or trying to get heat off of us as we heat up. It it is self soothing at the same time. It's an, adap an adapter, uh, and he's repeating the same thing over and over and over and over. I didn't do it. It wasn't me. I didn't do it. I don't know how he got this information. It wasn't me. This guy never says, then where were you that night? Tell me what led up to that night. Then why are you here? He doesn't say any of that. He's doing it wrong. I'm getting worked up. Sorry. So he, he's doing it wrong. So he starts that theoretical stuff. Well, uh, if you did do it and you want it to be end up better for you, and what, wouldn't you want to do something that's good for yourself? If there's a way you could you could help yourself when you do it, of course he's going to say, yeah. But what does he say? Yeah, I'm doing it. I'm doing it right now. I'm telling you I didn't do it. I don't it Never does he say, well, tell me what happened today. So you weren't there? No, I wasn't. Well, then where were you? Tell me about that. None of that. Greg, what do you got? Remember, this is two years after the fact, just one one key point. But let's list, I, I, my notes simply say read wrong, read wrong is all this is. And that means to both reads with the E, A and the other way, <laughs> because he's not reading the person sitting in the chair. Not at all. Mm -hmm. If he were, he would notice defiance, defiance with that chin back and him saying innocent and throwing himself out of the chair almost at one point in this interview. There's a whole lot of things going on here. I, I, this is just proof you can't take a book and do this and run through the book and go check, 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 and be yeah. an interrogator. It is an art form. It is not an art form for the squeamish because you're going to fail and look stupid many times. And he's doing it really well right here in front of me, in my opinion, because what he's done is not heard a word this guy has said. So he's not reading him and he's not reading him. So let's just not say it's the read technique that's causing the problem, it's poor application. There have been many people who've gotten great, true confessions. When you're set out to get a confession and you've decided before you go in, which a lot of people who use read are before they go in, you're going to go in with a checklist mindset and a bias mindset, and that's what he's doing. This kid is defiant when he says, when he first comes up and he, he says, I understand that. Pretty damn defiant. And he touches his brow from stress. Well, there's a good indicator. We always say that means something. Yeah, it means something. It means he's stressed. If Mark, to your point, I guarantee you that if you didn't know me and you came in and sat down in the room and I came in and started interrogating you, you're going to feel stress because I'm going to make sure you feel some stress to see where it goes. 
But what he does not pay attention to is where this kid's emphasis is. By that, I mean, does his emphasis with his hands and his and his vocal tone emphasize the th- same things his words are doing? Do it, does it align? So when he touches his brow, that's one thing. He's doing gravity-defying, extended finger movements constantly. The cop, on the other hand, tries to avoid the question when he starts asking, so what you're telling me, in a beautiful summary, what you're telling me is the only way to make my condition better is to lie to you and tell you I did it. The cop does his best to avoid that, and he doesn't allow him to. And one of the things we know, you know, I tell you all the time, you'll hear me talking about SEER because it's the most profound experience in psychology I've ever dealt with because you're under high duress talking to these people. You have to be careful because we're training their brain, their limbic brain, their animal brain, their mammalian brain to respond. And when a person is in that heightened fight or flight and you're injecting information, how that memory got there is not clear to them. I think about the last time any of you were in an automobile accident and how shadowy those memories are. Well, if the memory got there because somebody put it in or the memory got there because it happened, can be difficult to determine. And he starts to inject his first piece of information to this kid under stress. He's talking about them being there together. But the kid continues. It's one message. It's congruent and it's innocence. I, for the life of me, I don't know how a person gets to the point they don't look at the person they're interrogating. And look, we've all made mistakes. Everybody does. I'm not beating the guy. I'm beating the process. Somebody watching this video should have said, hey, did you notice this kid being so defiant? Did you notice? But this kid went to prison for 10 years and only was exonerated through work. I think it was an innocence project, but exonerated and let go from there. You should watch an interview with this kid on the morning news. He's got the most positive attitude of anybody I've ever seen. It's amazing. One of those tape replays. And you know, when something happens that you make, you know, you make a mistake, people understand you don't really want to come out with it because we're ashamed. I understand that. And I've done other things. But this is definitely not one of those cases. I've not done anything. I've told them the truth. And all I can do is sit here and wait and have a million people try to talk me into saying I did something I did not. Not fun. I guess I'm just trying to keep, you know, I'd like to see you help yourself. I think you still can help yourself. Because you think I did it? No, I don't know what happened. You know? Well, look at this way. I didn't do it yourself. yourself. Okay. And the only way I can help myself is by admitting to something I didn't do. That's what you're saying. No, not really. That's exactly what you're Let's saying. say, for instance, this other fellow, uh, Chuck, Let's say this was all something he, it was his idea. Let's say that he's trying to pin this whole thing on you because he paints a pretty bad picture. Well, maybe that, maybe he is, but I wasn't no. with him. I don't know anything about it. Do you think it would make it easier for him if you were able to, to come clean on what happened? I mean, I have come clean, all right? But if you hadn't, if you hadn't, do you think it would make it easier for your mom and dad? Your mom in particular. You said mom. Well, if I had that, I yes, but I had it. I don't know how many times I had to say this to you guys. I have not done anything. I was not there. I did not do anything. But if there was a way that you could help yourself, you'd do it. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. I'm telling the truth, so I'm doing what I can. I mean, if you know what this is like, man, let me talk to my dad. I talk to my mom. So I don't get one phone call, man. I gotta call my dad to get a lawyer fee. I gotta call my mom so she Let me find out about all that. Thank you. Okay. If you like this video, get the full body language breakdown and analysis on our main channel by clicking this video right here.